I was going to title this video Realistic Economy in The Sims 2, but then I realized it's not really possible to get 100% realistic. But you can get close by simulating some real life systems like taxes. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I handle finances in The Sims 2, including things like taxes, tax refunds, community treasury, loans, mortgages, child support, welfare, divorce settlements, earning money in college, inheritance, and a lot more. And if you enjoy content like this for The Sims 2, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Now let's get started. So first I'm going to cover the neighborhood treasury. The neighborhood treasury is the current balance of tax money that I have in any given neighborhood that I use to build and improve community lots and also pay some public servants. So I'm going to get into that more, but first I'm going to tell you how I calculate the starting neighborhood treasury for a brand new neighborhood. We're going to be using Pleasant View as an example today. So there are many different ways that you could start out your neighborhood treasury. You could just pick an arbitrary amount like 100,000 simoleons. You could go really in depth and sort of add up how many taxes you think your Sims would have paid over the past several years. You could start with nothing. Uh, you could start with zero in your neighborhood treasury if you wanted to make it really challenging. In my opinion, I think most neighborhoods would already have a treasury built up, especially if they were already established. If you were building a brand new hood, maybe you could start with zero. So the way that I calculate how much to begin my neighborhood treasury with is I add up the value of all the current community lots. And the reason why I do that is because I intend to replace all of these community lots. And when I sell them, the money goes back into the treasury. So I just go ahead and start with that amount. So let me show you what I mean. In a brand new Pleasant View that's never been played, we have three community lots. 330 Main Street, 290 Main Street, and 250 Main Street. Loading up 330 Main Street, I can see that it has a lot value of 103,314 simoleons. So I'll put this in my calculator and move on to the next community lot. Loading up 290 Main Street, I see that it has a value of 149,665, so I will add that to the first. And finally, loading up to 50 Main Street, it has a lot value of 117,873. When I add all three of the values together, I get 370,852 simoleons. This is going to be my treasury balance for beginning in Pleasant View. I did not include the park, but you could include it if you wanted to. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, I don't want to replace the community lots. I just want to keep those and build more community lots to go with them. That's perfectly fine. You can do that too. I would recommend that you start your treasury around three to 400,000 simoleons just to give you some money to work with, especially if you are like me and you like to build a lot of additional community lots. But it's really up to you how you want to do it. I'm just showing you what I do. So take Take it or leave it. <laughs> Now, after calculating my neighborhood treasury balance or deciding on what amount I would want to use, I then go over to my handy dandy spreadsheet. This is my tracking spreadsheet that I use to keep track of my Pleasant View families. And I just add another tab to the bottom called taxes. I put a starting balance and then I will just start adding entries underneath that. So I've already added two community lots to the neighborhood. I have added my career services center available for download on pleasantsims.com. And this lot is worth 49,335 simoleons. So back in my spreadsheet, I'll add an entry for the Career Services Center and subtract 49,335. Down here, I'll do a running sum. And this will give me my total balance that I have to work with right now. Now I need to subtract the other community lot that I've added. So here we have First Pleasant View Church and Cemetery, also available for download on PleasantSims.com. And the value of this lot is 125,532 simoleons. Now I'm going to subtract that value from my balance. And now my total treasury balance is 195,985 after I've added these two lots. I also use the neighborhood treasury to pay for upgrades and remodels of current community lots. So let's say I'm not happy with my Pleasant View Church. I don't like the way the cemetery looks. I want to take the cemetery out completely and move it somewhere else, which is something I want to do eventually anyway. And let's say this whole process costs me 24,000 simoleons. Then I would go back to my spreadsheet here and type um, church remodel 
and I would subtract that 24,000 simoleons from the budget. Now I have a balance of 171,985. Another thing I use the neighborhood treasury for is paying city employees. I plan to move a priest onto the church lot. He's gonna live here in the church and facilitate the community weddings. I find it much easier to have my church be a residential lot than a community lot, so we need someone to live there. I'm gonna use one of the Pleasant View townies, give him the role as priest in the neighborhood, but he's gonna need to earn a living. So he will get some money from our Sims who have weddings here, but I also like to give him a small stipend. And I will do this for Sim, my Sims who run the orphanage, the animal shelter, the jail, any community lots that I have a Sim live on and run for the benefit of the community, I will give that Sim a small stipend every week or every play session or every season or whatever. Since I've begun playing seasonally, I give my city workers a stipend at the beginning of each season that I start playing them. You could also do this weekly, like if if you wanted to give them their stipend every Monday morning when you start playing the round, it's really up to you if, if you wanna use this idea. So back in my spreadsheet, let's say it's the beginning of fall and I'm playing my priest for the first time. It's time for him to get his weekly stipend. So I will type priest stipend and I, let's say I give him 400 simoleons for his stipend. That's 100 simoleons a day, and that's to cover his personal expenses, any repairs and upkeep that need to be done on the church. So I will subtract 400 from that. And each time I play a public service worker, such as the caretaker at the orphanage, the caretaker at the animal shelter or something like this, I will decide what I want to give them for a stipend and subtract that from the neighborhood treasury. That's how I use the money in the neighborhood treasury, but how do I get more money in there? Well, that's easy. My Sims pay taxes. Just like in real life, where we have to pay taxes to cover infrastructure and public works, so do my Sims have to pay taxes for the same thing. So let's talk about tax rates and how I calculate taxes for my Sims. Here we are on my website at pleasantsims.com. If you go to rules, the very first post will be the Sims 2 Pleasant Sims gameplay rules. So click on that. And then you will see all of my gameplay rules for my game. What we're concerned with here are taxes. So my current tax rates are 10% of net worth 7% for retirees, and 5% for Sims with a net worth over 100,000 simoleons. Net worth includes household funds, any money in their bank account, and property value. So our renters are not taxed on property value, obviously, because they don't own any property. And if any member of the household is a retiree, the entire household is taxed at the lower rate. We also have deductions, but let's start with just calculating the base tax rate. So we're gonna start here with the Caliente family, which is actually the Goth family at this point. This is Dina Goth, Alexander Goth, Mortimer Goth, and their little baby, Eleanor. You can find your Sims net worth right here on the neighborhood screen. So just click on their lot, and this amount that shows up right under their name and address is their net worth. The Caliente slash Goth family has a net worth of 55,385 simoleons. That includes property value and any cash on hand, but it does not include any money that is in their bank account through the hacked computer. So if you use Monique's hacked computer to keep your Sims bank accounts like I do, you'll have to write this amount down or go in and find it. This is one reason why I always keep the bank account amounts written on my tracking spreadsheet. Now looking at my tracking spreadsheet, I see that the family does only has 370 in their bank account and that's Alexander's money. I'm not even gonna worry about taxing that. Dina and Mortimer don't currently have any money invested. So we're just gonna go with their base net worth that was found on the neighborhood screen. Now, normally we would tax this family at 10% of net worth, but because Mortimer Goth is retired, the entire household will be taxed at 7%. So we're just gonna take their net worth, 55,385 times 0 0.07 equals 3,876. And we're gonna round that down because I like to give my Sims a little bit of a break. We're gonna round that down to 3,800 because we need multiples of 100. Now we have our base rate of 3,800 and we're gonna give the family any deductions that they might have earned. So they're not actually gonna have to pay this much. So these are the deductions that I use. If you wanna set up your own tax system, you can set up your own rates, set up your own deductions, however you like it, however it makes sense to you. This is also 
based on the American tax system. I am honestly not familiar with how taxes work in other countries. So if you're not American, you might wanna set this up to more resemble how taxes work in your area. I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't know that. This is a very simplified version of how we pay taxes in America. So that's the, that's the system that I know and that's the system that I use. So we have a 1,000 simoleon deduction for home ownership since Dina and Mortimer do own the condo. We're gonna take 1,000 simoleons off of their tax bill. We have a 1,500 simoleon deduction for married couples. Mortimer and Dina are married, so we're gonna subtract 1,500 simoleons. We have a 500 simoleon deduction for each dependent child under the age of 18. Since Alexander is under the age of 18 and Eleanor obviously is a baby, that's two children, so that's minus another 1,000 simoleons. We also have a 1,500 adoption credit once per adoption, which this family has not adopted, and a 1,500 simoleon deduction for each local business owned. They also do not own any businesses. This means that they end up owing only 300 simoleons because of all the deductions that they were able to take. So now that we've calculated how much our family owes in taxes, it's time to have them actually pay up. You will need a mod called Monique's Hacked Computer to make this work, and I will put links down below if you're not familiar with that. If you've been watching my previous videos, you probably are by now. It's just a hacked computer that allows Sims to bank online. So Mortimer's gonna go to the hacked computer, he's gonna go to bank online, and he's gonna go to donate money. I don't actually keep a physical treasury in the game. There was a time when I used to play with a mayor sim who would collect all the taxes, but I just found that to be tedious and I didn't like to have the additional, the extra sim. Um, so now I just have them donate the money and then I keep up with the balance in the spreadsheet. But you could always have a mayor or some sort of tax collector sim who lives in your neighborhood. And if you wanted to do that, you would do transmit money to household funds of the playable sim that you wanted to collect the tax money. In my case, I just have them donate the money, which just gets rid of it. Oh my God, they only have 361 simoleons. They were very close to not being able to pay their taxes at all. And we'll talk about what I do then in just a moment. So Mortimer's gonna go donate 300 simoleons in his pajamas doing his taxes this morning. So it'll say donated 200 simoleons to charity. And then now he's gonna donate another 100 to charity. Charity is actually the neighborhood treasury. <laughs> now back in our spreadsheets, I will type goth family taxes plus 300. So this is gonna update our balance with an additional 300 simoleons. And I will do this for all the families once per round. So once per play session or once per season, the way that I play. I used to do this once per week when I played weekly. And it's just up to you how often you wanna collect taxes. So let's talk about what happens if a Sim owes taxes that they're not able to pay. If a Sim's unable to pay their taxes, they must take out a loan from the loan jar at a 3% interest. They can also sell some possessions to pay if they wanna do that. For example, in the Goth household, we could easily sell some things to come up with the tax money. They have a lot of decor and things that are just unnecessary that we could easily sell. But they were able to pay, so we didn't have to do that. Now the loan jar is a mod by Saijon, which I will put a link to down below. You can find it, of course, in miscellaneous miscellaneous, and it looks like a tip jar with a simoleon on it. It costs one simoleon. You can just place it anywhere on your lot, and then you can click on the loan on the loan jar, and you can choose your interest rate, which is one reason why I really like to use this. You can take a loan out through the hacked computer, but I don't know how to change the interest rate on that, so I just prefer to use the loan jar, and you could set it as as low as 1% and as high as 9%. I like to leave it at 3% for tax loans. And then you can borrow however much you need. So this family, let's say they're gonna borrow 500 simoleons. The interest will be added each day to the loan and Sims do have to pay it back on their own. They're, it's not automatic. It doesn't get added to the bills or anything. They just have to pay it back on their own and you have to leave the loan jar on their lot. If you delete it, the debt is gone. So it's really up to you. I mean, it's very easy to cheat with this. But if you want to keep things realistic, you purchase the loan jar, put it on the lot, borrow the money, leave it there until they pay it back. And we can click here, pay back entire loan, or they could pay it back in increments. We can click loan info to get an idea of our interest rate, how much interest has accrued, the loan amount. I just really like this mod because it's very flexible and you can use it however you need to. 
So this is what I do when Sims can't pay their taxes. Although most Sims will end up paying some taxes, it is possible for a family to get a tax refund if their net worth is low enough and they have enough deductions. Take the Bird family here for instance. The Bird family only has a net worth of 14,964 simoleons. Let's take 10% of that, which ends up being a 1496. I'm gonna round that to 1400. And then let's take out deductions. So, a thousand simoleons for home ownership, 1500 for being a married couple, and 1000 for two dependent children. This means that they will actually get a refund of 2,100 simoleons. This can be very helpful for low income Sims to get this refund once a season. I've loaded up the Burb household and they only have 214 simoleons in cash. So I will use the family funds cheat to give them their refund. So I'm gonna open up the cheat console and I'm gonna type family funds space Burb space plus 2100 and now they have their tax refund they have a little cash in their pocket and they're doing much better just like whenever my sims pay tax whenever they get a tax refund we also have to take that out of the neighborhood treasury so back on my spreadsheet i will type in burb family refund minus 2100 and that's gonna take the money from our treasury balance. Another note about the neighborhood treasury, you might be saying, well, what happens when you run out of money in the treasury? When I run out of money, then I cannot build any more community lots or make any more improvements to community lots until I build up some more money from taxes. If you really wanted to go deep into realism, you could possibly do like neighborhood loans and keep up with the interest somehow. I don't go that far. I just spend the money that my Sims have and if they run out, they run out. And in, until we get more, uh, I don't build anything else. So that's how I handle that. If you start with a balance of three or 400,000, you shouldn't have any problems uh, buying all the lots that your Sims would need to begin with and then saving up tax money after that. Now let's talk child support. All my Sims who do not live on the current lot with their biological children have to pay child support. And I use a mod called Monique's Child Support. Of course, I will link all the mods that I talk about today down below in the description box. And this mod automatically manages the system. You don't have to do anything. Anytime that you are paying, playing the household that should receive child support, it's automatically paid to them and you will get a little pop up on your screen that tells you child support has been paid and the money actually comes out of the household fund of the other parent. So here are the support amounts. When a Sim is pregnant, you get 200 simoleons per day. When a Sim is a baby, you get 200 simoleons on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. When a Sim is a toddler, you get 200 simoleons Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday a child Wednesday and Friday and teens just one day a week. So the amount decreases as the child gets older. So briefly, I just want to give you a little info about this mod. You can find it on Mod The Sims, but this version is only pets compatible. If you need a version for apartment life, um, you're going to have to find it here on Symbology, and I will link to both of them. But if you have the Ultimate Collection or Apartment Life, you need to download this AHMQ Child Support hosted by Imalia. This is the one that I use and it works great for me with the Ultimate Collection. In the game, when your Sim receives child support, you will get a message letting you know. And here we are on Nina Caliente's lot and she is currently pregnant by Don Lothario who does not live with her. And we got a pop-up that says, Nina received 200 simoleons from Don Lothario for child support. And it looks like they received their child support around 10 a.m. This can be very helpful, especially for single parents who only have one income. Getting this child support can help so much. Now, now, what happens if the other parent isn't able to pay? Here's what Monique says about this function. If the supporter can't support any longer, dependent will still receive the amount from nowhere and the controller will open a credit account hidden from us that will keep track of behind payments. Then when you play the supporter's house, the controller will add the amount to your bills, Tuesday bills only, and subtract that amount from the credit account until the credit account is zero balance. So no matter what, your Sim will always get their child support payment. And if the supporter can't pay, then they will just go into debt for that. Now let's talk about welfare. I actually had to move over to a test neighborhood from my main Pleasant View because this mod does some things that I didn't want to happen <laughs> in my main neighborhood. So this is the social security table, also called the social welfare mod. 
and this allows your sims to actually get on welfare just like they would in real life it says at the security table sim may apply for social benefits a social application will be placed in the sims inventory return home put this application out after that the sim will be receiving a base social welfare of 120 simoleons daily sims may upgrade the application as soon as skills are improved or badges gained okay that's misspelled but anyway so the amount that your sim gets does depend on their skills and badges so a more skilled sim would get more money for social welfare so you need to put this on a community lot and i am here in my career services center um, in a test pleasant view and i'm going to put this down just right here in the office now nothing's going to happen right now but when we come back in live mode this mod will spawn an npc that will stand here at the table and this is where you will go and apply for welfare i haven't been using this as much lately because i don't like that it spawns an npc but i do really like the idea of letting my poor sims go on welfare brandy broke is one example of a sim that i will sometimes put on welfare especially when she has the small children and she She's not able to work so once you put it down in your community lot you can put it any on any community lot that you like um, I have a special career services center for my sims to come find jobs and apply for welfare but you could put it in inside the grocery store anywhere you like then we're just gonna save and we're gonna go bring a sim here and put them on welfare so I can show you what that looks like so here is my test sim Chuck Testa <laughs> Yes, I named him after the commercial. This is Chuck Testa. He lives in this trailer over here. He only has 51 simoleons to his name and no job. He needs money really badly. So he's gonna walk over here to the career services and apply for welfare. So now he's arriving at the lot and you can see that there is an NPC. Chuck is making his way in. Oh, okay. Thank you for the warm wel welcome there, Nawaf. So he'll talk to the NPC. So then we'll get a little pop-up um, repeating the same thing that we saw whenever we placed the table down, telling us that he's going to get a base of 120 simoleons. So now we're going to send Chuck back home to start getting his benefits. Poor Chuck, he doesn't even have enough money for furniture. We're gonna go into his inventory now and there is a declaration application here. We're gonna pull that out and put it on the counter. And that's all you have to do. Now that the application is out, he will start receiving his benefits. If he gains skills, then he can upgrade. So let's see if we can have him work on some skills. So it's been a couple hours and Chuck here has gained two cooking skills. I'm gonna have him go and upgrade his application. Let's see if we can get him some more money. Social application has been accepted. Chuck's social benefits were increased. From now, Chuck will be receiving a social wel welfare of 176 simoleons daily. So getting skills really does help. You can actually end up earning more off of welfare than you do off of getting in a little entry level part-time job. But this is a great way for especially single parents who can't work to earn some income. It's now 7.50 p.m. and Chuck received a social welfare of 176 million. So it looks like they receive their money around 7, 7.30 at night. Now let's talk about divorce and divorce settlements. So I don't have a lot of divorces in my game. It's usually romance sims who end up getting caught cheating, who have divorces like Don Lothario. But I do have some rules for this scenario. You can find these, of course, on my website. And when sims are divorced, the sim who moves out is entitled to part of the married couple's estate. Sim Divorce Court decrees the following. The divorced sim is awarded 50% of what they originally brought to the marriage. Whenever a sim marries into a family, I keep track of the amount that they brought with them. For example, Don and Cassandra here. Don brought 54,677 simoleons whenever he moved in with Cassandra. When she eventually catches him cheating and divorces him, he will be entitled to half of that amount back. So 54,677 divided by two is 27,338 simoleons. Now, because I use a no 20K handout mod, whenever Dawn leaves the household or any, whenever any Sim gets divorced and leaves the household, they will automatically have 3,000 simoleons. That is it. I will use the family funds cheat to increase their funds to the amount, to 50% of what they brought to the marriage. Now, what do we do if we have a couple that was already married at the start of the game, like Daniel and Mary Sue? Let's see, let's say Mary Sue divorces Daniel. How much money does Daniel get to bring with him? In this situation, I give the Sim 30% of the household funds. So here are my rules. It says if the divorce Sim did not bring anything to the marriage, e.g. they were the original owner of the lot or part of a pre-made married couple, 
The SIM is awarded 30% of household funds. This includes any money in bank accounts. So that could end up being very little money, especially in the case of SIMs like the Pleasants, who don't have much money to begin with. I think they only have two or 3,000 when you first start playing them. So let's say they got up to 5,000. Then I would take 30% of that and Daniel would be awarded a 1500, which isn't much. He'd probably have to go to the flop house. And just to make it a little easier on our divorcees, the divorce sim will be exempt from paying taxes the round after the divorce takes place. So I will note that also in my spreadsheet that they are exempt for the following round. And that's just to give them a little time to build up their funds again. So the sim who initiates the divorce will use Monique's hacked computer to transmit the funds into the household account of the divorce Spouse. Now let's talk about earning money in college. Once again, I use no 20K handout, so my Sims do not just automatically get 20,000 simoleons when they graduate from college. Instead, they only get whatever they were able to earn on their own in college. This includes scholarships, part-time jobs, working in the cafeteria, whatever. I use Monique's Hacks computer in college to keep all of my college students' money separate. The better a sim performs in college, the more scholarship money they'll have to take with them after they graduate. Almost all of my college graduates end up living in small apartments or the flop house so that they can save up more money to get, their, to get a bigger place later. Sims who earn money in high school also take all of the money that they earned with them to college so they get a little bit of a head start. Now I will do money gifts for wealthy families. So let's say Alexander Goth graduates from college. He only has a couple grand. Alexander's not going to be living in the flop house. I will actually allow uh, Cassandra or Mortimer or whoever I have living in the Goth mansion to give him a big chunk of the Goth fortune to start his life out with because I think that just makes sense. Poorer Sims who come from poorer families will live in the flop house and they have to earn their own money to get their own possessions. Some Sims, when they graduate from college, will move back home with their family. If there's room in the family home, I will let them go back home for a while. There's also the matter of inheritance. So in the vanilla game, whenever an elder Sim dies, their friends and family get, I guess, life insurance money. I don't know where this money comes from. It just falls out of the sky and your Sims can get up to 20,000 simoleons just because an elder dies. Now, I find that highly unrealistic. I know some people might just pretend it was a life insurance policy and that's cool if you want to play that way. Um, I don't like it because I try to do whatever I can from keeping my sims from getting too wealthy, which can be a problem if you're just playing in the vanilla game. Everybody gets $20,000. You get $20,000. You get $20,000. You all get $20,000. Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, so I use a mod called No Inheritance After Elder Dies that prevents this inheritance from happening. However, I do still have an inheritance system in my game. So here's how it works. Any money that an elder has at the time of their death in their bank account or in cash may be distributed among the living family members. So I wait until a few days before the sim passes away when I know they're getting close to the end of their life and then I divvy up their money like this. If they have a living spouse, all money goes to the living spouse or partner. Um, if there's no spouse or partner living, the money will be sp split equally between all the Sims' children. If the Sim has no children, the money will be split equally between all the Sims' friends. And in the very sad case of when a Sim has no spouse, children, or friends, the money will be donated to the neighborhood treasury. Family homes are also inherited in my game. I personally mostly play with patriarchal rules, but except for Veronaville where I play uh, matriarchy. So don't take offense to this, okay? This is just the way I play. It's not meant to be sexist or offend anybody. I go on a case-by-case -case basis for home inheritance, so all family situations are different. Um, but these are the general guidelines that I follow. So the oldest male child will inherit the family home, except in Veronaville where it's the oldest female child. And the exception to this is when we have a gay couple where the oldest male is moving in with his partner or the oldest male child, die child dies. And if the oldest male cannot inherit, the family goes to the second male child. If there is no male child, the oldest daughter can inherit the family home and vice versa in Veronaville, unless she's moving in with someone else. If there are no children to inherit the home, it goes back on the housing market to be purchased by another family at a later time. I really try to keep the goth mansion, the pleasant home, and some of the bigger houses in the family for as long as I possibly can, but that doesn't always work out. And of course, I will bend my own rules if I, if I want to. 
these are just guidelines that I go by. So here is the no inheritance after elder dies mod. Um, you can find this on mod the sims and i'll link it down below as always um it works with all configurations of the game you just put it in your download folder and no more inheritance now what about mortgages student loans personal loans and those kind of things well personally i don't really play with those because i just don't like to keep up with it i feel like my tax system is enough for me to keep up with but i know some people do so i'm gonna go over some ways that you could incorporate that into your game if you were interested than that. There are several ways you can handle taking out loans for your Sims, and you can use loans for mortgages to buy a car, student loans if you want to keep up with that, personal loans, it's just any kind of loan that you want your Sim to take out maybe for to purchase a business. And I'm going to tell you about the couple ways that I am familiar with that you can do this. So the first one is to use Monique's hacked computer. Now, I don't personally do this because there are some downsides. If you want to use it, you can go to Bank Online loan and you can take out a loan amount for the money that you want then once you take it out you can use the computer to pay it back the problem is the interest rate is really high and you have no way to control it and also there is a weird bug where if you play a sim on a community lot and another sim that you're not playing but has a loan shows up on the lot then interest will get added to their loan even when you're not playing them i don't really like that so that's why i don't use monique's hacked computer for loans if i do need to take a loan out if you want to Take a mortgage out you could use the mortgage shrubs found on sim logical once again i don't care for the way the interest is calculated on these the interest could be really really high if you took out let's say you took out a thirty thousand simoleon mortgage you'd be charged 300 simoleons a day in interest and i just think that's a little too much for me personally so my preferred way to take out loans when necessary is to use the loan jar as I showed you earlier. Now, one thing about the loan jar is when you take out a loan, you have to keep this with your SIM. So let's do an example mortgage. So Chuck here is going to click on the loan jar and we're gonna choose an interest rate. Now for mortgages, I think it should be very low. I'm gonna put it to 2%. Now we're gonna borrow 25,000 simoleons. Now his household funds have increased by 25,000. We can click on this at any time and pay back. He can work on paying this back in increments as little as 100 simoleons. And I just have my Sims pay it back as they're able. Now, if he's using this for a mortgage and he moves to another lot, you must make sure that you put the loan jar in his inventory before he moves. If you don't, the debt will be effectively wiped out. He'll still have the 25,000, but he won't owe it to anything. Okay, now he's all packed up and ready to go. Let's move him out and move him into his new home. Now, after Chuck sold his trailer and went with his loan money, he now has 48,000 simoleons. He can afford many of the homes in Pleasant View. I'm gonna move him in to 190 Sim Lane. We open up his inventory. We see the loan jar is still here. We place it down on the ground, click on it, and he is able to start making payments back towards his loan. I'm gonna have him go ahead and pay 5,000 towards the balance. That just automatically takes the money out of the household funds. Then we can check the loan info and now he only owes 20,000 with an interest rate of 2% um, and 400 simoleons in interest. I usually just try to stay in the habit of storing the loan jar in the Sims inventory all the time so that I don't ever accidentally forget it. And then whenever I need to make a payment, I'll just pull it out, have the Sim make their payment and put it back in. Now Chuck will spend his life paying down that mortgage and enjoying his new home. You could do the same thing if your Sim wanted a car loan, um, just a, a business loan, a personal loan, student loan. I don't personally play with student loans. Um, in my world, Sims get free college, but it would be very easy to use this for student loans as well. So this has been a rundown on how I handle taxes and the economy in my Sims 2 game. It is possible to go much simpler than this and not even bother with taxes or do a much more simplified tax uh, system. It's also possible to go much more in depth with this and have more of an integrated economy, which is what I'm doing in my Edgewood neighborhood, where all of the money in the neighborhood is generated by the Sims. And I might do another video on integrated economies uh, another time because we could go really in depth there. What I've described to you in this video today is pretty much how I play the pre-made neighborhoods. All right, so leave a comment down below and let me know how do you handle your finances in your game? Do you charge your sim taxes? What kind of rates do you use? I wanna hear all about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you with a new video very soon. 
thank you so much for watching.